if you're a black man and you blame black women for all your problems, you need help. You need help and you're a pretty weak individual if that's what you do. And I'm going to sit down and elaborate why as to in this video. It doesn't really make sense to blame black women for all your problems. Like I've seen this go on for so long. And to me, it, it's not even rational. The men that make these type of arguments because they pretty much go into this whole baby mama, um, typical, this typical like alternate white supremacy rhetoric and they sit down and they blame black women in the ghetto for all their issues. Meanwhile, they fail to realize that, okay, cool. There are ghetto black women that exist that have um multiple fucking babies with fucking whatever, whatever, right? All right, so what about the rest? Like, that can't be your definition of all black women. And that's the thing that I notice about a lot of these dudes. A lot of these dudes, they all share the same similarities that they're all... They're all these whack-ass dudes that can't get women aside from the bottom of the barrel. So because that's all they can get, they sit down and attribute to all women or all black women being to what they're only able to capture. And it's like, nah, motherfucker, that's just the women you can get. There's like a whole plethora of other women that aren't on that shit that are successful, but you can't access them because you ain't shit. See, like, I, I hate when people sit down and they take this narrative because they ain't shit and dakes and in return can't get anybody who is shit around them they try to blame everybody else for their shortcomings women and girls should feel safe at all times say it with me women and girls should feel safe at all times we are consistently told as black women especially that we must choose that either we can be down for being black or we can be down for being a woman and what we are here saying today is that we will no longer choose. Women are out here always fight for black men, always in these streets, fight for y'all men when you get beat by the police, when you get shot by the police, when you get disenfranchised. We always out here marching for y'all, marching. But when it comes to women, y'all silent. It's not what you wear, it's how you wear it. Let your daughter go out there in the streets with that type of shit on. Whatever happens to her, just turn out. She should have came over here with that. She should have came over because she came over here talking that shit. It was never about peace over here. All you men who want to stand up and yell in women's faces and talk all this of this, goodbye. Saying. Goodbye. No, not here and not today. Give the man a mic. Give the man a mic. What are we here for, brothers? What are we here for, brothers? You can't do that, right? What are we here for, brothers? Not today. I said no. Taking a stand against R. Kelly, someone who's been termed the king of R&B and is loved by many has not been easy. I decided after a great deal of thought that I should speak my truth because it is time I stand up for myself. I trusted him and he betrayed my trust. Once I recognized my worth, I knew I had to walk away. We have evidence 
that Mr. Kelly has engaged in efforts to intimidate and retaliate against Faith Rogers. We are here today to <clears throat> let Mr. Kelly know in no uncertain terms that he cannot and will not intimidate his alleged victims into keeping silent about their allegations. Mr. Kelly, you may soon join the ranks of Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein, just as they have been and are being held accountable for their actions, you also must be accountable. You can look forward to a legacy which will not be your music, but rather the pain and suffering that you inflicted on the many vulnerable teenagers and young women who claim they were victimized by you. What would you say to him if he's watching right now? Time's up. Among the trash that litters his back alley is where police say paramedics found the broken body of a 16-year-old girl. Medical tape marks where she landed on a concrete slab after being tossed off of a roof three stories above. Yeah, as a mother, I have 14 years old, and, and my house is sad when I hear that. It's very sad. The brutality of this attack has rattled so many in this East New York neighborhood, inducing fear in some, anger in others. And my honest opinion is, if the cop ain't get him, this whole block was going to whoop his head. But I shall let him know. It all happened Sunday morning around 4 a.m. Police say two men lured the teen to this roof at 725 Miller Avenue, took turns raping her, strangled her, then threw her over. 24-year-old Anwar D'Souza is in police custody charged with attempted murder, rape, and strangulation. His accomplice, identified as 26-year-old Antonio Owensford, remains at large as this girl he allegedly attacks now clings to life. Community leader Juan Rodriguez visited the girl's bedside side today. The parents are sad. They're very sad. Who, who wants to get their 16-year-old daughter raped and thrown off of a roof? Uh, these guys are monsters.